Hey there science geeks, thanks for joining me for another chemistry lesson. Today's topic is going to be predicting products of chemical reactions. To me this is one of the most challenging topics in chemistry because it takes so much of what you've learned so far this year and you put all those skills together. So hang in there, I'm going to give you some tips on some things that I think could be helpful for you and let's just practice and do some fun demos along the way. Behind me I've drawn some chemical reactions and I'm going to use them to kind of help you through some tips. I'm going to start off with my first piece of advice. If I give you the reactants in a chemical reaction, what I want you to do is I want you to think about what you're working with. Am I giving you an element? Am I giving you a compound? Are you looking at a hydrocarbon? Is oxygen involved? All of those different things are going to help you come to the ultimate conclusion of what type of chemical reaction are you working with. So the second thing that you want to do after you've considered what am I dealing with here is think about do I have a synthesis chemical reaction, a decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, or combustion. Because once you figure that out, now you know how to predict the products. For instance, if you determine that you're working with a hydrocarbon and oxygen, you immediately know that this is a combustion reaction. And the products of a combustion reaction are always carbon dioxide and water. Well, that makes your life a lot easier. So the second thing I, also, I always want you to do is figure out what type of chemical reaction you're working with. The third piece of advice, use your common sense. There are some things in a chemical reaction that just don't make sense for you to put together. We've done a lot of practice with formula writing. When we did ionic compound formula writing, we always had a metal ion and then we had a non-metal negative ion that went along with it. It would not make sense for you on the product side to put two positively charged ions together. In the same regard, it would not make sense for you to put two negatively charged ions together. Because we know if you put two positives together or two negatives together, they're going to repel. So definitely use your common sense when you are trying to figure out what the products are. My fourth piece of advice is this. If you are dealing with an element, elements are neutral in charge. They have the same number of protons and electrons. So don't try to put a charge on an element that's shown all by itself. In addition to that, when you are dealing with what I like to call the Honkelbrief elements, in other words, the diatomic elements, the seven elements that have a little tiny subscript two at the end, make sure you remember that they're diatomic. So those seven elements are hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine. So if you ever see those elements listed by themselves, for instance, one of the reactants is oxygen, you know that it's always O2. If you can predict that one of the products is hydrogen gas, well, don't write it as H, you would always write it as H2. Um, one of the last things that I want to point out is, as you predict products, always make sure that the compounds that you are forming if they are ionic compounds, make sure you make them neutral. You probably spent a lot of time this year learning how to do formula writing. Don't forget about all your formula writing. That's one of the most important things you need to do when you predict products. Lastly, the very, very last thing that you'll do after you predict the products is you'll go back and you'll balance the chemical equation using coefficients but don't try to do that until all of your formulas are written correctly. So behind me on the board, I've got the start of some chemical reactions and we're gonna walk through those together to make sure you have some suggestions, some examples for you to base all of the following problems on. So let's get it started. In my first example, you're gonna take my advice and you're gonna stop and think about what I'm giving you. So I've got Li, which is lithium. This is an element, obviously, and it looks like it's chemically reacting with lead to chloride. This is a compound. So going back to the different types of chemical reactions, stop and ask yourself, what type of chemical reaction am I working with? The answer to that is 
This is a single replacement chemical reaction. Remember what happens. In a single replacement chemical reaction, the metals in this case are going to switch places. We have a metal that comes in on its own. It's going to kick out the metal that's already a part of the compound. So here's what we can do. One metal comes in, one metal gets kicked out. That means that lead is now going to be all by itself. So lead is now an element. The second compound, if we take lithium and we combine it with the chloride, we'll get a compound called lithium chloride. Now, don't just take the subscripts and drag them from the left side over to the right side. It's important that you do good formula writing here. In a compound with two ions, lithium is a positive one and chloride is a negative one. So when you put a positive one and a negative one together, they easily cancel out. So we're going to get LiCl as the other product. Now some of you are looking at this and you're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, but the number of chlorides is not the same on the left and the right. Well, of course, the last thing that you're going to do is start changing the coefficients. So to fix this problem, here's what we can do. We add these big numbers in front called coefficients. And what they do is they multiply by any subscripts that might be in the compound. So in this case, if there are two chlorine atoms here and only one over here, one thing you want to keep in mind is if you don't see a subscript, chemists are lazy. We don't ever write our ones. There's actually a one right here and a one right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a big old fat two in front. I call that a coefficient. That means I now have two lithiums and two chlorines over on the right hand side. The chlorines are two atoms, the chlorines are two atoms, that's balanced. Well now, how do I fix this problem? I see two lithiums here, but only one over on the left hand side. You got it. I can put a coefficient of a 2 in front of the lithium, and now we have the same number of atoms of lithium on the left side and the right side. So this, of course, is called balancing an equation, and it's the last part of what you should do when you are writing the products of a chemical reaction. You go back at the end and you balance the equation. So notice I've got two lithiums, two lithiums, one lead, one lead, two chlorines, and two chlorines, and we've got a great chemical reaction written right there. Let's move on to the second one in red. In this particular case, I have a compound called silver nitrate, and I have another compound called magnesium bromide. So I want you to stop and think about this again in terms of classifying different types of chemical reactions. When you have two compounds, I want you to think about two couples. This could be uh, a woman and a man, and a woman and a man, and in this case, we're gonna switch the women. So we're gonna take one metal ion and switch it with the other metal ion and it's gonna look like this. The silver will now go with the bromide. The magnesium will now go with the nitrate. Now, of course, you have to know your ion charges. If silver has a plus one and bromide has a negative one, it's going to look like this. A, G, B, R, plus one, minus one cancels out. The magnesium now goes with the nitrate. Magnesium has a positive two. Nitrate has a negative one. Make sure this is neutral. We're gonna have a compound that looks like Mg, parentheses, NO3, parentheses two. Now again, it's not a balanced equation. The last thing we do is we go back and balance it um, I notice that I've got two bromines right here, and I'm going to put a big two in front, and now I have two bromines on the right. That sort of messed up my silvers, and so now I want to make sure I have two silvers on the left side and the right side as well. If you look at our nitrates, our nitrates, we've got two and two, and it's now a balanced equation. Moving on to the third example, okay? Again, what do you have to work with? This is going to help you classify the chemical reaction. So in this case, notice I've got a compound, but it's rich in carbons and hydrogens. So we call this a hydrocarbon. 
Well, remember, there was that one special type of chemical reaction where we had a hydrocarbon burning in oxygen. You can't burn anything unless oxygen is present. So we're going to take our CH4, which is called methane. Uh, if you're thinking in terms of covalent naming, you might call that carbon tetrahydride. Uh, but in organic chemistry, we call that methane. It reacts with the oxygen. And the products of this one are easy. When you've got a combustion reaction, they're always CO2 and H2O. So there's the products of our chemical reaction. Super duper easy. Now you might say, well, this doesn't look like a balanced equation. Let's go back and figure out why. So far, the carbons look good. But the hydrogens do not. If I've got four on the left, I need to have four on the right. I could put a big fat two in front, and that gives me four hydrogens over on the right-hand side. Now check out your oxygens. They're a little bit harder to balance because they're kind of split up. You see them twice on the right-hand side. So this is a situation where you would add them together. Right here I see two oxygens, but then there's another two oxygens, which gives me a total of four. How do you get four over on the left-hand side? I put a big fat two in front of the oxygen. We've now got a great balanced equation. Going on to the fourth one. This is really interesting because on the left-hand side of the arrow, the reactant side, I see one reactant. In all the different types of chemical reactions that we talked about, there was only one where you had one reactant, one chemical on the left hand side of the arrow and that's a decomposition chemical reaction. Now decompositions can be a little bit tricky. Um, when I look at this and I try to figure out well what could possibly come out of that, um, think about it as a couple. If you had a man and a woman and they're a couple together, really the only thing that can happen is they break up and split apart. And so in this particular example, the calcium oxide has to break into the individual elements that it's made of, which of course are calcium and oxygen. So the calcium part is easy. There's our CA. The oxygen, I want you to remember, that's one of those seven elements that we call diatomic. So when you write that, don't just put O. I want you to remember that it's O2. Let's go ahead and balance that equation. So looking at this, the oxygen, we've got two on the right, but only one on the left. If I put a two in front of the calcium oxide, um, then we would have two oxygens on either side. Let's go ahead and fix our calciums. And now we've got two calciums on the right, two calciums on the left, and it's a balanced equation. In our last chemical reaction on the board, notice that I've got lithium and I've got oxygen. Again, stop and think about what you're working with. Lithium is an element, oxygen is an element. The only thing you can do when you've got two elements is merge them together and create one product. This is a synthesis type of chemical reaction. When lithium and oxygen go together, you make lithium oxide. Stop and think about your charges. In an ionic compound, lithium is a positive one. Oxygen would be a negative two. That means to write lithium oxide, you would need Li2O to make all the charges add up to zero. Let's balance it before we move on. If I have two lithium here, I would want to have two lithium here. But then, look at our oxygens. There's a problem, right? If there's two here, but there's only one here, keep in mind, we have to make sure that we have the same number of oxygens on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So I'm going to stop, and maybe we need a two right here. Well, of course, that's going to now mess up my lithiums. So that's okay. When we balance equations, a lot of times you have to erase and start over. And so that shows me four lithiums on the right. I've got four lithiums on the left, two oxygen, two oxygen, and we've got a balanced equation. So this is our starting point, right? We're always going to stop. We're going to think about what we're working with. We're going to classify the type of chemical reaction. When we're coming up with products, we're going to make sure we know our ions and make all of our ionic compounds neutral. And then when we're dealing with some of our elements, we realize, one, they're always neutral. Don't try to give them charges if they're in the elemental state. 
And also don't forget that there are seven diatomic elements that always require a small subscript of two after them. At this point, I'd like to continue practicing with you because this can be such a challenging topic for students. Along the way, I'll try to do a couple chemical reactions just to keep it kind of uh, fun and interesting. Uh, but keep on practicing and don't give up. This is definitely the heart of chemistry and I love predicting products. So I hope you join me uh, and, and find this topic really interesting.